Turn to the Kolkata rape and murder case. The focus is now on the former principal, the man who headed RJ Car, RJ Car Medical College. His name is Sandeep Ghosh, and he's got a sketchy past. Perhaps that's why the CBI is on to him. They're interrogating Dr. Ghosh relentlessly. He was called in today as well, the eighth day of consecutive grilling. And what are they asking him? Mostly about his actions leading up to the rape and murder. When did he know about it? How did he react? Whom did he call? And when did he report it? As far as we know, Ghosh was not physically involved in the crime, but his past is quite suspicious. Ghosh was appointed R.G. Carr's principal in 2021. His tenure was by no means clean. Let me tell you what happened in June last year. Ghosh was accused of corruption, that too by one of his colleagues at the medical college. Apparently, he was illegally selling biomedical waste even misusing pandemic funds. So an inquiry was initiated by the state government and Ghosh was transferred from RG Carr College to Murshidabad Medical College. But 15 days later, he was back. And the inquiry? Its findings were never published. The same thing happened in September 2023. Trainee doctors accused Ghosh of corruption. He was again shuttled to Murshidabad, but one month later, he was back. Does any of this sound fishy to you? Well, it should. The same principal was accused of corruption twice. Both times he was transferred and both times he was reinstated. Almost sounds like someone is protecting him. The same thing happened after this month's rape and murder. Dr. Ghosh offered his resignation, but the state government rejected it. Instead, they shuttled him to another college. Only on Wednesday did they cancel that transfer. Imagine that 13 days after the crime, this is what has happened. Even the Supreme Court is asking why. After the principal resigns from this medical college, he sent to another office. He's, he's, he's appointed as a principal of another college. Another he doesn't resign. But anyway, be and that, be that, but as that he was conduct, at the least his conduct is under scrutiny and he's appointed as a principal somewhere else. The principal's role is important here. He headed the college when the crime happened, so he should have filed the FIR. But as we know, there was a delay. The FIR was filed 14 hours after the body was discovered, and that too by the victim's father, not the principal. The question is why? We may get the answer soon, because the CBI is conducting a lie detector test on Dr. Kosh. A Kolkata court has given them permission. So we should have clarity soon. But from everything we've heard, one thing is clear. Ghosh is not your straightforward principal. He ran the college as he saw fit. Look at what his co-workers have said, that he used to illegally sell unclaimed dead bodies, illegally sold bio, biomedical waste, failed students on purpose, took a 20% cut on college tenders and took money for allocating hostel rooms. Frankly, it doesn't sound like a principal. It sounds like a mafia boss. Did the state government not know about this? Let me show you a new report. It says Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee sent a personal letter to Dr. Ghosh. She wished him on his birthday in 2022. Apparently, he was on the Chief Minister's good books. Not a good look, is it? But that's not her only worry at the moment. Reports say her party is divided on this issue. That's the TMC or the Trinamool Congress. That's her party. On one side is Mamata Banerjee, on the other is her number two and nephew, Abhishek Banerjee. Last week, the chief minister took out a protest rally, but Abhishek Banerjee was absent. Reports say he is not happy with how this case was handled. And he is not alone. Another TMC MP is attacking the Kolkata police. He wants the CBI to question the police commissioner. So this is clearly a political challenge too. Now, I know what you're thinking. The principal's alleged corruption did not cause the murder, nor did the chief minister's birthday wishes. Well, we can't be sure at this point. The victim's friends say it is a possibility. They claim that she knew too much about the college mafia, and maybe that led to her murder.
The police or CBI have not confirmed this angle, but the victim's colleagues stand by it. Plus, such corruption is a symptom of something larger. They expose institutional problems, problems in the way the college was run, and such institutional issues do contribute to crime. Just think about it. What if the principal was more focused on college security and less interested in bribes? What if he had vetted the civic volunteer before hiring him? I'm talking about the arrested suspect. He had a history of assaulting his wife, yet he was at the hospital. You see, crimes do not happen in, in a vacuum. They happen because people and institutions fail. The question is, did that happen in Kolkata? The signs are not good so far, but we'll hold off for the probe to end. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative. Hello and welcome to First Post.